a lot of people in like the music industry or people that ask for a lot of fame will say something like, I sold my soul to the devil. So the first question, Ryan, is going to be, can you sell your soul? So the the basis of that question implies that you have a right to your own soul, like you own it yourself. Um, and to my understanding and, and the research that I did, uh, there isn't a place in the Bible where anyone actually sells their soul to anyone, even the devil. Biblically, I don't see it as a a thing that is possible because like I was saying earlier, we don't own our own souls. We don't have the right to dictate what we do with ourselves. And ultimately we're going to end up in one of two places, depending on how we react to what Jesus has done for us. And he's the one that ultimately does own and control our destiny and our fate. Uh, at the end of time, even the devil is going to get thrown into what's called the lake of fire. A lot of people think of that as hell. When he gets thrown in there, he's not the king of hell. Satan is not reigning over anything once he's been banished to the lake of fire. And that's a very common misconception. He won't own anything there. And so ultimately, you cannot sell your soul to the devil. He can't own it. He can't do anything with it, to my understanding everything is on loan from God. It's all mm -hmm. his. He made everything. He gave it to us and he can also take it away. Basically, that kind of translates over to your body and your soul. Your body was given to you by God. Your soul was given to you by God. And he's in control and he has ownership of all of it. So the next question we're going to have is, can the devil be saved? And this kind of ties into angels and demons. Any of the fallen angels or the devil himself, can, can they be saved? That's a really good question. The simple answer is no. The devils and any creature that exists in heaven uh, is an eternal being. And so when they made that choice, that was an eternal choice. When the devil, when one third of the angels got cast out of heaven, that was something that happened in a space that doesn't have time. And so that's a very hard concept for humans to understand because we've only ever experienced time. The devil made a, a singular choice and that is what he's going to have to live with for eternity. Like I was talking about the lake of fire earlier, he's going to get cast into that lake of fire at some point in the future. Right now, he's on the earth. He's roaming about like a lion seeking whom he may destroy. So we need to be careful of the influences and the things that, that are around us, and, and we need to be wary of you know, him affecting us. Uh, Christians shouldn't be scared of him, but we should just be careful of what we get into because he is around trying to make us stumble. Ultimately, I don't believe the devil can be saved because he made an eternal choice. I, I've always heard that there was no plan of salvation for uh, the devil or the demons or any of the fallen angels and stuff like that. So that's a, that's the other side of the same coin would be when Jesus came back, he didn't die for anyone other than a human being. He, if we were to create a hybrid creature that has the intelligence of a human, but in the, like the body of a pig, I don't <laughs> believe that Jesus died for that creature. But Jesus came back and he died for human beings. He lived as a human being and he died as a human being for other human beings not for any other creatures. In the Bible, it talks about, in a certain sense, kind of like human hybrids, Genesis 6, I believe, when it talks about the, the Nephilim and the, the men of old, the men of renown. I believe we're getting back to that spot where through genetics and genetic engineering, we're going to start seeing weird, hyper-intelligent creatures. Uh, we have AI right now that's getting up to and, and pretty close to human intelligence and being able to do all of the same mental tasks that a human can do. So I don't believe that an AI can be saved. I don't believe that a genetically engineered animal thing can be saved either, and ultimately uh, an angel or a, a devil be saved in the same way that we are either. The way I kind of think about it is they are or were in heaven in the presence of God in a place where they weren't affected by sin. We're like sinful creatures that can't really help ourselves and we need God's forgiveness to get us all the way to the finish line, right? But when we die or when Jesus comes back and we get glorified, we're going to be in a state where sin is removed from us and we're not going to be subject to our sinful nature. We're going to be able to make the choices that we want to that God wants us to make without any kind of temptation or anything like that. And so the way that I was thinking about the whole devils and demons be saved is our finish line is sin removed we're in the presence of god and they were already there mm -hmm. and then they chose to rebel at that point that'd be like if you put your faith in jesus you got all the way to heaven and then you're like you know what i'm actually going to rebel that's kind of how i would see that is they were in a place where they made the actual choice i'm going to rebel against god whereas we did that on accident <laughs> that's the only part i'd change a little bit we don't sin on accident we sin on purpose we haven't necessarily seen god but god has clearly revealed himself to us and we still 
still rebel against him, but you're absolutely right. The angels were in heaven. They know who God is. When we see the, the demons in the Bible, they knew who Jesus was, uh, even when he was on the earth. And so I think you're totally right about all of that. They knew they have 100% of the revelation of who God is, who Jesus is, what Jesus did for us, and everything else. They made the choice to reject him with all of that information. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Do I need to be a good person to be saved? So a lot of people will say Christians in the church, those are like the good people. I'm not one of those people. I don't think I can go to the church. I don't think I can be saved or anything like that because I've done all these wicked things where I, I know I've done something that's unforgivable. So do I need to be a good person to be saved? Ultimately, there is no good person that is saved. If you were a good person, you wouldn't need to be saved. And so what you need to do is, as the broken person that you are, you need to understand that you are broken, understand that you're sinful and, and wicked and evil and you've done all these wrong things. The sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross and, and through his death, his resurrection, and his ascension, we can have assurance that despite all those wicked and evil things that we did, we can have eternal salvation. And so ultimately, no good person has ever been saved. Jesus didn't need to be saved. Uh, he came and he saved us, and he's the only good person to ever live.